Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Daniel Mann and in this video I'm going to take you through the rest of the trip that I did to the Kingdom of Tonga in late 2015 with a good mate of mine, Tim McDonald. In the last two videos I've made about the Kingdom of Tonga, we've looked at dogtooth tuna and reef fish individually. This video, I thought I'd collate the highlights of the rest of the trip together and maybe explain a little bit more about the hunting methods of the fish that we're targeting and why we do the things that we do. The days all start the same in Tonga, in the back of a ute loaded up with gear, ready to get out spearfishing. The only thing that changes is the amount of daylight, depending on who slept in. The first spot of the day, we look over the side in 30 meters of water and I can clearly see the reef from looking over the side of the boat. The visibility here was just, it was pretty insane. Not quite silver in Iceland, but it was still pretty insane. With the flasher deployed and a burly trail made from the fish frames of the day before, it didn't take long for some doggies to show up. Now most of you are probably sitting at the screen yelling, shoot it, shoot it, why didn't you shoot that fish? Well, in the words of the guys from Back to Basics, if you wanna shoot a big dog tooth tuna, you gotta let some 25 and 30 kilo models just swim by. And that's exactly what we were doing. But unfortunately for us, we didn't see any doggies after that. With the doggies disappearing from our burly trail, we focused our attention on the bottom, looking for reef species. Here you can see Tim on his way to the bottom to start his hunt for this jogfish that he's just seen. The key here is to actually get to the bottom. And I don't mean hover five meters off the bottom, hover maybe six foot off the bottom, put your fins on the bottom. I mean actually get right down on the bottom. Otherwise those fish will not come anywhere near you. That is absolute key. In most cases, merely sitting on the bottom will not be enough to draw the attention of a KG reef fish. Here, you can see Tim trying to attract the jogfish in by throwing some sand up into the air. Well, not really air, it's water actually, so he's throwing it. He's throwing sand up in the air for lack of a better term. Anyway, this will draw the attention of the jogfish and most other reef species if you do it enough. He briefly looks up to see if the jogfish is in range, but it's not, so he sticks his head back down to avoid eye contact. Once the jogfish is looking straight at him, he knows he's caught its attention and it's going to come in for a closer look. Lucky for me, we had drifted into some shallower water and there were still a few jobfish hanging around. I saw that there was no sand on the bottom here, so I grabbed a small stone to begin scratching and tapping on the nearby rocks to draw the attention of the jobfish. Your aim tends to be quite good after six days diving. For me, that's the most challenging way to shoot a jogfish, getting on the bottom, waiting for it to come in, attracting it a little bit, and then putting in a great shot. If you wanna make it a little bit easier for yourself, they do respond very well to burley. So if you put some old fish frames and scraps in the water, they will come up and eat it all and they become a lot easier to shoot. However, certain places they won't eat burley, such as Brisbane and Tweed Heads, and if you've shot a massive jogfish there, I salute you, you're an animal, because I've never been able to do it myself. You can see here, Hilton had just shot a nice jobfish, so I followed down in hopes that others would be around. Yeah. 
By now we're getting into the groove of sitting on the bottom and finding these jobbies, but this dive I saw one fish that I've never ever managed to shoot before. No, it's not that pesky shark coming at me. Off in the distance is a long nose emperor. These are notoriously difficult to capture for a spearfisher. This fish was coming towards me because there was a piece of burley in the water, but had I stayed on the bottom for maybe another 10 seconds, I probably could have got a shot on this fish, but I raised myself off the bottom for a shot way too early, and consequently, the fish swam away. This is Tim diving straight after me in the same spot. As he approaches the bottom, he looks up, sees the long nose emperor. He knows he has no other cover to get behind, no reef, no rock or anything like that. So he hits the sand and the fish swims straight in front of him. You can really see the beautiful colors and markings of these fish when they're fresh. Later on, I found myself in the burley trail and like jobfish, long-nosed emperor also love to eat burley. They are little gluttons, just like the jobbies in most of these cagey reef species. The hardest thing about shooting these fish in a burley trail is when you're looking straight down on them, the profile of the fish is much smaller than the broadside that you get when you're sitting on the bottom. You need to be a pretty good shot. Like I said before, you're a pretty good shot after diving six days straight. After a quick stop for lunch, we were back in the water looking for doggies again, but Tim had the big gun and couldn't quite help himself on this long nose emperor. Couple of nice reefies managed to Nut both of these, jobbies nine kilos and first long nose emperor three kilos, so pretty happy with that. Last couple of days, giving the doggies a bit of a touch up, so we uh, got into some reefies today. Yellow lip, long nose, and uh, 12 kilo jobby. Pretty stoked. With no more luck on the dog tooth tuna, we headed back in. We only had one more day left on charter and we wanted to get out early and make the most of it. That wasn't helping the situation. The plan for the day was to go to some shallower reef spots and target some demersal species, then for the afternoon, target dogtooth tuna. On this spot, there was a sand gutter running between two pieces of reef that were full of black and white sea perch as well as midnight snapper. A good technique for the black and whites is the same as the jobfish. Get to the bottom, throw some sand up, and most of the time they will come close. You can see here that I've gained some additional cover by sitting behind this rock, as well as throwing up the sand. what nine days straight diving will do, you're gonna be a good shot by this stage. The next patch of reef was flat and boring with bombies peppered all the way through it. This is a perfect example of using cover to your advantage when hunting cagey reef species. You can see Tim here crawling slowly towards the rock and the bommy, waiting for the fish to come out into his vision, not trying to reveal himself before the fish can see him. It's much easier to see from Tim's angle. Jumped on a nice, nice crack, nice cave. 
and there was a whole bunch of midnights. The, these are the black and golds. We've also got some uh, black and whites as well. Um, nice fish, really nice to eat. The boys are pretty stoked on this one for eating wise. As the afternoon rolled on, it was back to looking for doggies and I could not resist this cheeky little job fish that had made its way into our burly trail. Promotion from shooting that nine kilo jogfish must have really rung the dinner bell because the doggies showed up immediately. This was only a small fish around 10 kilos, but they make exquisite sashimi. It was Tim's turn to get back on the doggy gun and we drifted into some deeper water. Tim decided to have a look down on the bottom just to see if anything was coming through at lower levels. Like they say, if you want to find a big doggy, you have to let those little ones go. That is how you shoot dog tooth tuna. This is actually Tim's PB dog tooth tuna and it was shot at 35 meters and it was 35 kilos. And with a shot like that, he deserved every bit of that fish. That's it for this video guys. If you like this style where I break down the dives and talk a little bit more about the hunting techniques and the various methods we use to capture these difficult reef species, let me know in the comments section. Also, if you'd give me a thumbs up if you like this video, it actually makes a difference and subscribe if you're not already because there's plenty of new content coming. And if you want to get better at spearfishing, this is your opportunity to get this book. I will give this book to anyone who can guess what I have been cooking in this pot all evening, this is my dinner for the next couple nights. That's a tip. If you can guess what's in that, I'll post this book to you so you can read all the sweet tips on how to get better at spearfishing. So, yeah, guess what I'm eating for dinner.